Hi, I'm Gareth Green and in this video we're going to be thinking about which might be the best chords to use following chord 6 when you're working in a minor key. Now a couple of things just before we get going with all this. The first thing is to say I'm assuming that we're working in the harmonic minor scale. Of course there's a melodic minor scale, there's a natural minor scale, there are modes, there are other possibilities. Why are we working in the harmonic minor scale? Well the convention since 1600 is that when you're writing harmony you tend to use the harmonic minor scale as your point of reference. The clues in the title if you like. Um, harmonic minor for harmony. The melodic minor much more used for melody and sometimes there has to be a, a bit of trading to make those two things fit together. But that's the convention. I fully accept there'll be people working in other styles who'll be wanting to do clever things with their harmony using the melodic minor or the natural minor. That's fine. You might be able to adapt this to purpose but just so we're clear this is all going to be in the harmonic minor scale which will suit the vast majority of people. The second thing I just want to clarify is why I've got B's after some of these chords. This is just an indication of the inversion of the chord and you've got two international systems with inversions. There's the ABC system, very simple. A means root position, B means first inversion, C means second inversion and if you don't write anything at all you assume it's A. Or you might be in the other main international system which really is drawing on the old Baroque figured bass where root position is a 5-3 chord, first inversion is a 6-3 chord which is normally abbreviated to 6 and the second inversion is a 6-4 chord. And when you're writing a 5-3 chord, a root position chord, you tend not to write the numbers and just assume if there's nothing there it's 5-3. So basically looking at all these, whenever you see an inversion chord on the, on the board for our purposes in this video, it's a B, a first inversion chord. So either just think of that as a first inversion chord if you're not happy about A, B, C, or think of the B as a 6 and you'll be absolutely fine with it. So I'm now going to cover 12 possibilities for where you might go from chord 6 if you're writing a piece and some of these will be pretty obvious things and you'll say yeah I've done that a million times before, that's great, lovely. Others may just be things that you haven't thought about doing. So instead of being in the place that lots of people tell me about where they just say my trouble is I keep writing pieces of music, I keep doing the same progressions. Well let's think about some possibilities slightly outside the box. Okay, so some familiar, some less familiar, let's work through them. Option number one, I'm going to work in C minor for the purposes of this illustration. We're going from 6 to 1 to 5. Well that's a pretty solid way of progressing. Why does it work? Well the great thing is in chord 6 in C minor you've got an E flat and a C. When you go to chord 1 you've also got an E flat and a C. So you've got two common notes there. So or two common tones. So that gives a nice smooth progression and then possibly going on to chord 5 to follow. So nothing too radical about that. You could in option 2 go from 6 to 1 to 4. It's probably going to take you on somewhere else. That's not the end of something is it? So you might go 6 to 1 to 4 to 5 or you might go 6 to 1 to 4 to 5 to 1. So they could be good progressions to follow. Now have a think about the next one. I've now got a couple of possibilities using chord 2B or 2-6. So chord 2 in first inversion. Why am I using 2 in first inversion? Because it's a diminished chord when you use it in root position. Some people think that's a slightly ugly sound. I think maybe because you've got this tritone between the outer parts. So if you put it in first inversion it tends to sound a little bit warmer. So and it also in this case helps the bass line a bit because if you go from 6 to 2 you've also got the tritone leap in the bass. So if you go from 6 to 2B the bass line is a bit calmer isn't it. So 6, 
to 2B to 5 is actually quite a good progression, isn't it? Um, option 4 is going from 6 to 2B to 1B. Now again, that might want to go on somewhere. 6, 2B, 1B, 5, 1, for example, could be a good progression. And that notion of 2B, 1B, two first inversion chords back to back, giving you some steady movement in the bass. You could even in this one, put a little passing note or a passing tone in the bass. So from six, you could do that. So just by slipping in that G in the second half of the chord six, you get a scale movement in the bass. So that could be a good way to do it. Now, here's a more radical idea, uh, option five, going from six to three B back to six. Now that's something that you might not have thought about. It's quite handy. One thing is that if you're wanting to sort of hover around six, but you want to go somewhere in the middle of the six, well, this is one way of doing it. Um, e flat is a common note or a common tone between the three chords. And of course the other two notes just go down a semitone or a half step and come back again. So you can do that, quite a nice little progression, slightly colorful one. Option six is to go from six to four to five. That's perhaps a bit more conventional. Pretty solid chord progression there. Option seven, also fairly common. Six to four to one. So you're just using six before what could be a cadence, four to one. Um, option eight, slight variation on that, going from six to four to one B which would be a way of not necessarily going to the cadence, but being able to move on. So six to four to one, B five, one, for example. So sometimes these are kind of leading you into a cadence. Sometimes they're uh, patterns you might use earlier in a phrase. Option nine, well, what are we doing here? We're gonna go from six to four to seven B. Okay, well, 7B, why would I want to go to 7 in first inversion? Well, 7 is often a chord that people duck because it's a diminished chord, but it's quite a colourful one, again, especially in first inversion. It's like the 2. So 2 and 7 in the harmonic minor scale are both your diminished chords. So again, the first inversion principle is the same as it was for 2. Now, it doesn't want to stop there, obviously, but 6 to 4 to 7B to 1, or 6 to 4 to 7B to 1B, means that that can be quite an effective thing to do. So if you're going to go from 6 to 4, well, where do you go next, I suppose, is what this is flagging up. Okay, well, very obvious one coming next, 6, 5, 1. So it's just putting that 6 in before you've got a 5-1 cadence. So that's quite a strong, predictable one. Okay, uh, option 11 is to go from six to seven B to one. So if you're wanting something that's not going six, five, one, well, actually, what about seven B as a replacement for your five? It's another possibility. Or option 12 to go from six to seven B, to 1B gives you a kind of ongoing possibility, doesn't it? So 6, 7B, 1B, then possibly 4, 5, 1. So there we are. Interesting to have a think about this and think, well, which of these progressions have you kind of found yourself using? Which are the ones that you think, ah, oh, that's a new one for me? Because play around with the new ones and see if they kind of give you some fresh thinking in, in the harmony. And of course, if you're having fresh thinking with the harmony, it's giving you fresh thinking with what goes with that melodically as well. Well, if you found that uh, helpful video, well, do go to our website at www.mmcourses.co.uk. Lots of things to see there. We've got blogs, we've got uh, opportunities for 
individual tuition if that's uh, interesting to you. We've got lots of courses on there in harmony, theory, oral, analysis, orchestration, sight singing, you name it. We've got all sorts of resources uh, which lots of people find very helpful. So have a scout around there, see what you can find. And while you're on the home page, you might just want to click Maestros because we have a global community of musicians, our Maestros group. And if you become a Maestro, there are three different levels to which you can sign up and you can find out all about it and see which level might suit you best. But some of it's quite fun. You get emojis and badges and that kind of stuff. You get early access to videos, some behind the scenes content, that kind of thing. Um, also, we have monthly live streams. So one of those live streams is basically a kind of teaching input session uh, where I try to do something pretty solid for an hour and often on topics that have been requested by members of the group, which is great, so we can be responsive to what people want. We run a live chat through the whole thing so people can make comments, ask questions, share ideas. That's also uh, incredibly helpful to people. We then have a second live stream and in this one you can submit your own compositions, your own arrangements, your own harmony exercises, recorded performances, whatever you want to submit really and you will receive some one-to-one -one feedback from me uh, and again we're sharing this in the group so uh, we can learn from each other and lots of people say that their horizons have been opened just by seeing somebody write something uh, in a different style from their own for a different instrument from the sort of thing that they might normally do and it's just kind of opening up new possibilities and again the live chat's running so you can ask questions, share ideas, make comments. It's a very supportive community. And one of the things that impresses me is how so many people say, I've spent years on my own lonely trail and this is just wonderful. The chance to get together with other musicians and to share and realise that we've all got the same successes and struggles and um, that is really something that helps build us up and encourages us on the ongoing journey. So if any of that stuff is for you, have a look on the website and uh, see what you can find.